Welcome to the Somme Vigil podcast series, which tells the story of the Battle of the Somme in the words of those who were there. I'm Simon Bendry, Director for UCL Institute of Education's First World War Centenary Battlefield Tours programme. This series was commissioned by the Department for Digital, Culture, Media and Sport and developed in partnership with the First World War Centenary Battlefield Tours programme and Chrome Radio. It was first released to accompany the Somme 100 Vigil at Westminster Abbey, held through the night of the 30th of June and into the morning of the 1st of July 2016, to mark the centenary of the Battle of the Somme. In this podcast, a member of the Cameron Highlanders recalls how by the autumn of 1916, heavy rain had turned the Somme battlefields into a sea of mud. By the autumn of 1916, the weather had turned. Private John Jackson came from Glasgow and was working for the Caledonian Railway when war was declared. He enlisted with the 6th Battalion Cameron Highlanders, with whom he would serve for over four years. Jackson saw action at Luz before arriving on the Somme in the autumn of 1916. Leaving Brel in the afternoon, we marched in heavy rain and over almost impossible roads to Becor Wood. We expected to get billets in some old wooden shelters, but there were not enough to go round, and the signallers were lucky to find room in an old cookhouse in a trench called Tiger Pop. What with being wet to the skin and everything around us in a soaking condition, we were in a very miserable state, but we set to work and built a great roaring fire to dry and warm ourselves while the rain kept pouring down all night. We rested the next day in preparation for entering the front line at night. At seven o'clock in the evening, we set off to relieve the Norfolks, whose position was supposed to be somewhere in front of Highwood. Owing to heavy fighting in the sector at this time, the front line was never long in the same place. Old trenches were constantly being blown up by shell fire, and new ones dug every night, so it was not an easy task in trying to find the men we were meant to relieve. The whole valley of the Somme at this time was little better than a sea of mud, and roads were terrible to march over. Passing through Death Valley strewn with dead bodies of men and horses, and the wreckage of transport columns, with now and then great bursting shells falling around us, we struggled as best we could till dark. To try and keep ourselves as dry as possible, we walked our way along the edge of trenches, feeling our way cautiously forward in the darkness. All went well until we got close to Highwood, when a few shells landed a score of yards to our right and our officer ordered us into the communication trench for safety. For a few minutes we scrambled along through mud and water up to our waists. After such a hard march, it was now midnight. This almost finished us, and we cursed the officer for having ordered us into such a place. At last, completely exhausted, we reached the wood which had previously been a German stronghold. The wood was now reduced to a tangled mess of broken trees and smashed wire defences, through which, in various directions, ran lines of trenches. The trenches were full of bodies, both British and German. They lay in grotesque shapes, some indeed stood propped against the parapet, and more than once in the inky darkness we spoke to men who were beyond the power of answering our questions. Always there was the possibility of running into the enemy lines, We were all strangers to the ground, so we tried to make as little noise as possible. Added to the invisible uncertainties and terrors of the night arose the nauseating stink of the dead and rotting human flesh. Small wonder, men's hair turned grey in the night. John Jackson was awarded the Military Medal at Ypres in 1917. He was demobilised in 1919 and returned to work for the Caledonian Railway. In 1926, he wrote a memoir describing his wartime experiences. You have been listening to The Story of the Somme, a Chrome Radio production for the Department for Digital, Culture, Media and Sport, in partnership with UCL Institute of Education's First World War Centenary Battlefield Tours programme. The producer was Katrina Oliphant. In the next podcast, a member of the Royal Naval Division describes the chaos on the battlefield resulting from the bad weather and heavy cloud cover.